Let's look at a situation where you have to pick a path. To some extent, we faced this kind of conundrum before. So for instance, we've seen in the E1 reaction where if you generate a carbocation and then there are two different types of beta hydrogens, you have to decide which type of beta hydrogen preferentially to remove and that determines the regioselectivity of the elimination. And this is going to be a similar situation except really in reverse. In an elimination you make an alkene as your product. In this case you use an alkene as your starting material. So let me just draw this alkene here. This alkene has at one end of the double bond it has two hydrogens. At the other end it has one hydrogen and a phenyl group. This particular alkene is called styrene. It's a polymer of styrene that makes up styrofoam by the way. Styrofoam is made out of polystyrene but that we will maybe discuss a little bit later in the semester. So I want you to think about a hypothetical reaction in which styrene reacts with an electrophile. So this is just some generic electrophile. So could you please remind yourself of a couple things. Is the electrophile the Lewis base or the Lewis acid component in a reaction? And related to that, do electrons flow toward the electrophile or do electrons emanate from the electrophile? An electrophile is a Lewis acid. And that, of course, means that it's an electron pair acceptor. So electrons flow toward the electrophile. OK? All right. So what must be the role of the other compound in this reaction if this is the electrophile, which is a Lewis acid, and electrons flow toward it? In this case, this molecule is going to act as what? This is going to be the Lewis base. It's going to be the source of electrons. Okay? The other thing I need to tell you about styrene is that the three double bonds within this six-membered ring, this so-called phenyl group. It's a benzene ring. What I need to tell you is that for reasons which we will explore much more fully in the second semester, those double bonds have a special stabilization to them that makes them much less prone to reaction as compared to this other double bond. Okay? So if you're looking for the nucleophilic site of styrene, don't look here. Look elsewhere. So the next question for you then is, where do you start pushing the arrows from on the styrene molecule? So where are the nucleophilic electrons from the Lewis base? The most available electrons are the pi electrons. So use the pi electrons. And so the next thing I invite you to do is to just push one arrow in which you show the pi electrons of the double bond of styrene acting as the Lewis base and interacting with the electrophile. Well, here it goes. Here are the two electrons from here. And we're going to make a bond to E. So this problem was about picking a path. Let me number the carbons here for you. So let's call this carbon 1 and let's call this carbon
carbon two. There's an ambiguity in this green arrow. What is it? This green arrow could either mean make a bond between carbon one and E, or make a bond between carbon two and E. So we have to make a choice. We have to pick a path. In order to pick a path, we want to look down each of the two paths as far as we can until they bend in the undergrowth. We want to analyze what would be the consequences of going along each of these two paths and then pick the better one. So can you do that? Can you draw two separate possible products of this one green arrow? One in which you interpret this green arrow to mean make a bond between carbon one and E, and a second alternative where you make a bond between carbon two and E. So let's use this red pathway here. So carbon one bonded to E. So if we do that, come over here, carbon one is still going to have two hydrogens attached to it, but now it's also going to be attached to E. So let's number our carbons just to keep track. Here's carbon one and here's carbon two. And then on carbon two, there's going to be a phenyl group there, there, and there. And carbon two also has a hydrogen attached. We need to be sure that we balance charge. We had a positive electrophile and a neutral styrene molecule, so there must be a plus charge around here. There it is. All right? So if you didn't get a chance to do it already, what about the other pathway? In this pathway, we would make a bond between carbon two and E. What would that give you? Well, if we have a bond between carbon two and E, here's carbon two, here's E, H, here's my phenyl group, and then up here, I just have a hydrogen, and a second hydrogen, this is carbon one, and then the plus charge along this blue pathway would be up here. Okay, so we've looked down each of these two paths. One path, the one where we make a bond between carbon one and E is here. The one where we make a bond between carbon two and E is here. And now your job is pick one as the better one. And by better, we mean, energetically speaking, look at the consequences of doing this the pink way versus doing this the blue way. Well, let's look at the carbocation. This carbocation right here, primary, secondary, tertiary, this is a secondary carbocation. And this one? This one is a primary carbocation. Now let's go back to this secondary carbocation for a second because it's actually not just your run-of-the-mill secondary carbocation. What else is special about this particular carbocation right here? Besides being secondary, how else could it be stabilized? Well, it's stabilized by resonance from this benzene ring. I won't draw out all the resonance structures, but maybe you should. There are three other resonance structures that you could draw by bringing some electron density from, this, from the phenyl group uh, over toward the carbocation. So this is not only secondary, it's secondary and benzylic. Okay? So if you had to choose a pathway, you would want to choose this one. So we're going to be talking about any number of reactions of alkenes, and this is a very important principle. 
When you use the alkene as the Lewis basic component in a reaction, and the electrophile can be a number of different things, you need to consider this regio, it's a regio selectivity problem. To which end of the double bond do you attach the electrophile? And the general principle is do it in the more energetically favorable way, which is going to lead you to the better of the two possible carbocation intermediates. And then the last question before we conclude here is, what is the simplest electrophile, E plus, that you can think of? So E plus is a generic electrophile. There is no element E on the periodic table. But what's the simplest electrophile that comes to mind? The simplest electrophile is perhaps just a proton. So the first class of reactions of alkenes of this sort that we will talk about is where the electrophile is just a proton. This is exactly the microscopic reverse of the last step of the E1 mechanism, which was removal of a proton from next door to the carbocation to make a double bond. Now what we're doing is we're starting from the double bond and we're putting the proton back on to generate a carbocation. 